Okay. Um, so uh, this is work mostly from uh, my student, Cahal O'Connor, so it's the usual caveat about me not knowing the details of what he did <laughs> in super detail. Uh, he's, he's away in New Zealand on holidays, so um, <coughs> he's planning to do lots of extreme sports while there, so I'm hoping he comes back in one piece, so we'll be able to continue. Uh, so Cahal's looking at um, using uh, data from the Microsoft Connect and how you would transfer that to a cloud-hosted game. Um, talk a little bit about cloud-hosted games and the Connect. Um, talk about uh, the protocol we specified to enable you to transfer the data. A little bit about how we uh, segment images so that you reduce the amount of data. Some experimental results and a little bit about what we're doing at the moment and what we plan to do in the future. So, um, as you know, cloud-hosted applications are pretty ubiquitous. Uh, in all kinds of application domains, and uh, this is also the case in the games in industry. Uh, so, systems like OnLive, Core Online are becoming very popular. So, a couple of, of important uh, benefits uh, allows gamers quickly access a wide variety of games, um, allows the provider uh, offer a subscription model, um, and for the gamers, they also don't need to buy the, the, the latest and greatest console. Uh, so it's quite attractive, and there seems to be a big trend in that direction uh, in the industry. Uh, in terms of, of what's happening in the gaming industry in general, there's obviously a big push towards uh, controller-free sensed inputs, uh, like uh, is provided by, by Microsoft's Connect. Uh, and we're starting to see some games that are sort of augmented reality, where the, the picture of the gamer is put into the actual game, and they see it coming back you know, augmented in some way. So the question is for us is, well, how do these two trends impact on the viability of, of cloud-hosted games? Uh, so this is the Microsoft Connect. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Um, it uh, contains a, a sort of VGA camera to get a color image, uh, infrared uh, projector and, and sensor to allow you to create a, a depth uh, image, and also a microphone array for transferring audio. Um, <coughs> So after a lot of people start, when, when the Connect was released first, a lot of, of people tried to hack it. So eventually Microsoft said, OK, we're, we're going to create a Connect SDK that, that you can put on your own PC and you start to use the Connect for, for purposes other than connecting to an Xbox. Um, so via the SDK, uh, it'll, the SDK will, will sort of take the, the, the raw data coming from the Connect, and it will generate or detect or infer 20 uh, skeleton points on, on the gamer's body, <coughs> and it'll do that for one for one player, even though the, the Connect itself can think and track up to six players. Um, you can configure it to uh, use a range of resolutions and, and uh, frames per second. These are the typical ones that people use for the color sensor and for the depth sensor. Um, so you can see uh, for thir uh, 30 frames per second, it's quite a lot of data. Uh, in terms of uploading it to, to a cloud. Uh, again, the bit depth is eight, eight bits for the color sensor, 11 for, th for the uh, infrared depth. So um, <coughs> there's also an open source project that Microsoft are involved in called Connect Service, and that allows you to stream the color and depth images, uh, audio, and the skeleton data points uh, across the network. So what's, th what's the issue? So augmented reality games are starting to appear. I'll show you a, a screenshot of one in a second. Um, <coughs> so there is a need to, 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 to embed the image of, of the gamer into the game itself. And there's a strong trend towards controllers free sensed inputs. So like the Connect is the best example at the moment, but, but there are other examples uh, appearing in the market. So based on the measurements we did <coughs> using the Connect service, um, to stream the, the, the color uh, image, uh, it's about 10 megabytes per second. The depth image, nearly 30 megabytes per second. And the skeleton data, half a megabyte per second. So if you think of a standard uh, residential broadband connection, obviously the upload speeds are much less. So this you know, streaming to a cloud seems pretty uh, difficult with those kind of numbers. Uh, so the question we asked was, how can we uh, control the transfer of this data? Uh, so to give you the example, this is a, a game that came out last year called Harry Potter Spellbook. Uh, this is actually for the for the PlayStation uh, Move. So the 
the move controller is turned by the game into a magic wand and then all kinds of things fire and dragons appear on the screen and, and the, the gamer has to do spells and make things appear in front of them. Um, so I, we think that, that there's going to be a lot more games like this and you can imagine all kinds of, 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 of scenarios similar. So uh, in the paper, we look at a couple of, of ways that we can reduce the volume of data uh, and they're all fairly o obvious. Uh, the first is, well, let's compress the, the images. Um, let's not send all the frames to, to the games platform and let them replicate uh, frames at the other side. Um, let's just take the, the, the part of the image where the gamer is because there's going to be a lot of background which is going to be unchanging. Or right, let's do both together. Uh, and, and what's not depicted here, you could, could periodically also send the full background image uh, and overlay, overlay the, the, the segmented image so that you get something uh, reasonable uh, to present to the game on, on the server. So the, um, the paper specifies a protocol to, to control these various options. Uh, if you want to see the details, go to the paper. I won't bore you with all the parameters because uh, it's pretty late. Um, so just in terms of how we do the image segmentation, and again, we just harness the, the fact that the Connect SDK gives you the skeleton points uh, for, for the person, the 20 points on the person's body. Uh, so just find the, outermore, uh, the points on the outermost extremities of the person and use that to simply segment the image. Um, so this give you an example. Uh, so despite appearances, this guy is actually a postdoc. He's actually a pretty decent scientist, but he's also a very good dancer. <laughs> um, so what we do is basically take the full image. This is at the recommended seven feet away from the connect itself. Uh, the red dots, I don't know if you can see them very well, those are the 20 data points that are uh, skeleton points that are generated by the connect. Uh, and then we just basically take the outermost points uh, in the white border and uh, give a, a clearance, with, uh, <coughs> a set percentage of clearance so you can ca capture all of the body and then just get rid of all the background and we can send this. And we also have an option to uh, send, for example, the top half of the body. So you can, the, the connect will identify which points are which on the person's body. So you can just ask for certain points. You could even go further and, and, and uh, <coughs> ask for, for, the, for the head if you want it. Um, so obviously that greatly reduces the amount of data that you're transferring uh, to your cloud hosted game. Um, so we, we did some experiments. We created a test bed, uh, basically two PCs, um, implemented our protocol uh, with the Connect. Um, we chose fairly arbitrarily to use XMPP as the, the transport protocol. We did have uh, thoughts around using XMPP presence uh, for, for load balancing, which is something we may do, but uh, it's obviously not the most efficient of transports, but um, and we, we may change it in the future. Uh, but it's fairly straightforward to, to, to implement against, so we did. Uh, we used uh, gzip to compress the, um, the frames we sent, um, reserved the latency about four milliseconds to do this, which in the context of end-to-end -end delays seemed, seems reasonable. Um, we used the part of the, of the Connect SDK to uh, record a six-minute session of, uh, of uh, our postdoc dancing. Um, uh, with, you know, sort of a range of movements from stretching the arms out wide to keeping them in close. Um, uh, so the SDK allows you to record this and feed it back through the system so you, you can you know, have reproducible results. And we set the, the image resolutions uh, at 30 frames per second, uh, as shown there, uh, 640 by 480 for the color image, uh, 320 by 240 for the infrared. Uh, I should have also said that uh, there's been apparently leaked documents from, from Microsoft indicating that the, the next version of the Connect will go to full HD, so the, the amount of data in each image will, will actually be, be much greater. So, um, so these are just some plots of, of the, um, the bits per second transferred. Um, the, the black line is where we take the, the full segmented image of the full body of, of the gamer, and the red one is where we take the, the, the top half. So you see on the bottom, the, the average bandwidths are, are greatly reduced from 
what we were seeing with the Connect service up to uh, 0.43 megabytes per second for the full body and less for the, uh, the, the top body. And this is just doing the segmentation. Um, if we also decide to not send some frames, uh, you can get a further reduction. So basically this shows that you can get to the stage where it's, it's reasonable to do on a, on a typical broadband connection. So, so what are we doing now? Uh, well, we, we're looking at, uh, what we've done so far has been very much statically configured, so we're looking at, well, let's make this auto automate the algorithm and make it adaptive. So we're looking at using an available bandwidth tool. Um, we've used uh, PathChirp a lot to estimate the, the bandwidth uh, between the, the client and the distant uh, games platform. Um, we'll use DummyNet to emulate various network conditions. Um, so basically, we'll use that estimate of, of, the, of, the bandwidth, ba of available bandwidth uh, uh, to adopt uh, how, how we send the data. So we can obviously adjust the, the frequency with which we, we send or, or don't send uh, frames uh, or segmented or complete frames. Um, and we're also looking at taking the level of gamer movement into account. So if the person is moving really fast from being sort of like this to like this, then use that to, to trigger that we need to send something fairly quickly. So we're looking at, at uh, designing a sort of an adaptive algorithm to, to do that based within the constraints of the, of the bandwidth that we were estimating is there. So um, we are in the process of open sourcing what we have so far. Uh, Unfortunately, it's, it's still through our processes, but in the next weeks, we, we should have open source to the, what's described in the paper, if anybody's interested. Uh, please just contact me. Um, <coughs> what we want to do then is to integrate with um, a games platform. So there's a paper tomorrow uh, called On Gaming Anywhere that this is going to be an open source uh, games platform. So we would very much like to integrate what we've done with that platform. Uh, and then do some quality of experience measurements uh, to see the impact of the, uh, the strategies we have for reducing the amount of data transferred to the cloud platform. Um, we're also interested in doing server selection and load balancing. Um, we have some experience using available bandwidth estimation tools to, to do this for other applications. So we think, again, that's something that could be a relevance for cloud-hosted games. Um, and finally, we plan to look at some other application areas. Um, one that's sort of interesting for us at the moment is uh, healthcare monitoring. So the idea that you may have uh, an elderly person being monitored in their home, uh, you might use the connect to detect that the person has fallen um, by essentially analyzing the, the skeleton points and then trigger sending uh, the actual uh, color images to, to some remote station where you know, healthcare staff are there to monitor the patient. So there, there are all kinds of applications being discussed for Connect, um, and you know, we think there's there's lots of applications, there's lots of opportunity to to use this sort of transfer of the data to 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 good use. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. Hi. This is Saverio Mascolo from Politecnico di Bari, Italy. Uh, when you say um, adaptive transfer, uh, data transfer protocol, what do you mean? To which protocol uh, are you referring? Well, okay, I, I, I suppose I, you, you, want the, 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 you want to be able to put the game as it is on the, on the, on the cloud host, the games platform. And the games are expecting the, the connect to be directly connected to an Xbox. So they're expecting the sort of you just to get the these constant uh, stream of images so they don't expect uh, an encoded video signal so you, so what we're talking about is basically just just sending individual frames and adjusting how we segment segment the interesting parts and then overlay it back with the background at the end and present it to the game as if that game was attached directly to a connect via an, via an Xbox so you know whether you, whether you could whether you can do sort of uh, encode the, the, the signal using some codec, I'm not okay. so sure. Thank you. 
Uh, you're proposing a quite a complicated encoding scheme here. Uh, have you evaluated the CPU cost for this? Because the point of cloud gaming is to not have require a large CPU at the client side. Yeah, well, um, we haven't done a thorough evaluation, but I mean, the, 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 the Connect SDK does most of the work. Yeah, um, but uh, in the realistic scenario, you might not even have that kind of power locally. Sure, yeah, sure. Uh, that, that's a fair point, but, but it's hard to see how you can start to use the Connect without having, having some processing capacity beside it, either on board, it's on, on board the device itself or on a attached PC. Good point. He was giving me the evil eye. <laughs> um, so one of the interesting problems that you have with the Connect system um, is that I think when it's connected directly into the console, right, you're, you have a very small latency, right? Yeah. And uh, one of the big killers of all this n cloud gaming stuff is this latency. And yeah, I'm wondering, sure. you know, are you guys thinking about, um, as you, you know, you were talking about integrating this with like gaming anywhere about uh, you have to do some sort of this like the fps has this latency mitigation yeah, uh, yeah. techniques or do you envision having to integrate those into kind of taking the, the skeleton and saying well that actually happened a little while ago and kind of yeah managing that, or? probably i i don't have a clear uh, idea of, of, of the impact um so we haven't got to the stage where we have a full end-to-end Thing, so we can't really assess what the, the impact is. Um, the only suggestion I have is that uh, what the speaker today, the invited speaker, talked about on some of the 3D warping, uh, mm. that technique that actually has been used to try to mitigate this particular um, a delay and do basically some of the warping and so on predictions yeah, yeah. on the client side for the gaming. There has been uh, ACM Multimedia had papers last year and the year before. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's yeah, it's a very good suggestion. It's not an area. The speaker today actually had some really interesting yep, suggestions. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we'll definitely definitely investigate further. Okay. Thanks, speaker. Thank you very much.